Special thanks to these companies for being long-term partners of this channel. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Zach. Here we talk about overlanding in tech. Today I want to show you the process of installing one of those long cases onto a roof rack with aluminum extrusions. So I in particular have an up top overland rack and some of you may have a Prinsu rack or a front runner rack or some of these other racks that all have T-slotted channels where you would maybe mount a case to. Now, I particularly am going to be using the up top overland T-nuts. Uh, they sell them from their website and I kind of looked into trying to see if I could find the size somewhere else, but just ended up breaking down and buying what they have because I know it'll work and uh, it's just kind of handy to have hardware that works perfectly with their stuff. So with that being said, um, this video is not going to be too complicated. It's going to be fairly short. I'm going to be mounting a Harbor Freight Apache 9800, I believe is what it's called. They're like a 52 inch um, case. They're about 10 or 12 inches wide and uh, they're really great for storage. So uh, we're going to be mounting that up onto the roof. So let's show you all the hardware that I'm going to be using to mount this up there. And then uh, I'll show you, I've got to drill some holes and then we'll uh, get this thing mounted up there. So. All right, so if you're like me and you have a case and you had old roof rack bars and now you've got new ones that uh, you know have different locations for holes, I found these awesome little rubber stoppers. So the ones I bought are 9 16 by 3 8 by 1 inch. They look like this and I'm basically just gonna shove them in the old holes on my case. I think it'll just help with waterproofing them. So I bought four because I think I'm gonna have to drill four new holes because originally this case was mounted on my LFD crossbars, but I'm gonna be putting this on my up top Overland Bravo rack. So we'll set those aside for now. Um, this is just a little plastic dish that I'm using to show all of the hardware. So this is pretty simple and honestly, I'm just gonna kind of walk you through, but what comes in this little bag of hardware from up top Overland is a M6 screw and then they include these washers and these lock washers and then obviously the T-slotted little channel nuts. And these are spring ball nuts. So when you push them into the rack, you just kind of twist them in there and then they'll seat themselves. So it's pretty handy. And the, the hardware is great if you are just trying to mount like a thin metal panel or something. A lot of their adapters and hardware is just like I think really thin maybe eighth inch aluminum that's powder coated and so these little screws are perfect however for our application the boxes are a little bit thicker and so what I found is is you have to kind of get the perfect length screw because if you don't get the right size screw then you're gonna have too much play in anchoring this thing so the size screw that I bought is an M6-1 by 20. And I believe the ones that come from up top Overland are either 16 or they're a 14. And this is a 20, so it's just slightly longer. And uh, I think it's gonna work perfectly. So we've got one flat washer that I just took out of my hardware here. We're gonna put that on the screw. Then we're gonna put a rubber washer to hopefully help with waterproofing it. And then this is going to go through the case and then on the other side of the case, we're going to mount up one of these T-nuts. Now, if we really wanted to, I could probably use one of these lock washers. And honestly, having a little bit more on the shaft of the screw rather than less isn't probably gonna hurt it because we just don't wanna have extra threads because then that's gonna be what's loose when we're mounting this case to the roof rack. But I think this will work perfectly. So essentially this is the hardware setup. We've got our 20 millimeter screw with an M6-1 thread or M6 times one thread. We've got a lock washer, a flat washer, and then a rubber washer that's going to screw in to this T-channel nut. And all of that space in there is what we're going to be threading through the plastic case that we're putting on the roof. Okay, so I don't want to overcomplicate this, but when mounting these cases to your roof rack, what you're going to do is you're going to figure out the spacing. So however far your two crossbars are apart, you're going to figure out the spacing, and then you're going to drill holes 
through your case the size of whatever size bolt you decide to use. So you're just gonna use a standard flat washer and then a rubber washer. And this rubber washer I think does a really good job of keeping this area fairly waterproof. Uh, obviously a little bit of you know moisture or water could sneak up next to the metal on metal bind there but i think that the rubber does a pretty good job so i just make sure i'm not going to hit any of these like structural plastic lines and then also there's some plastic feet and you can see the imprint on the plastic maybe that shows up on camera but there's like a little oval here so just avoid those but honestly it doesn't really matter where you put these screws otherwise you could put it right here you could put it here you could put it here i just think the four corners method works pretty well to keep it fairly locked down and i just wanted to show so i bought these smaller master locks a pro tip is uh, you know don't buy cheap locks because they corrode and they rust on the inside quickly and then you just end up needing to buy more locks so only buy once and buy nice locks these i bought a pack of four and the keys all are interchangeable. So it's really nice with having the two cases, two locks per case. I've got one key for all four locks and it works really well. So, and here's just another angle of the case up on top of the roof rack. Fits really nice. And so, I mean, maybe this goes without saying, but just in case you just put a T nut inside this and then you drill your hole, put the screw through pretty straightforward. So the, I like these cases too, because they're low profile and uh, a lot of people wonder, well, why would you even put these on your roof rack? Well, the reason that you do is instead of using those big ski boxes, you have these low profile things. They don't take up a ton of space on your roof rack and uh, they're also lower profile. So I still fit inside a seven foot parking garage and uh, I think they look good too. So those are kind of awesome reasons. Uh, with up top overland rack though, uh, I think it's a really nice pairing uh, with using these cases. And it's actually one of my favorite, if not my most favorite rack for the Forerunner. I'm not sponsored by them to say this. I just genuinely really believe in their product. Uh, but this front area here, this front uh, wind fairing, you can customize. So, so I think you can just buy this one and then a cutout version for the Bravo rack, which is what I have. But you can get a fancier one that has wire channels on the sides with paint match channels. And uh, it's really awesome. And that one comes with tons of different cutout options. So I'll link those both down below if you're wanting to check those out. Uh, but it comes out with like, a, you know, if you want to do LP6s, LP8s, diode, whatever you want to do, they have tons of different options for cutouts. So that's one reason I really like this Bravo rack. And uh, the Alpha rack comes with a couple other features if you want to spend the extra money for that. So, and again, all of these channels here are adjustable. Uh, they've got a video on how to assemble this thing, but basically it's just a bunch of screws you lay everything out and you uh, assemble it all and then you take off your stock rails and uh, put it in the same location. So it's a no drill rack and uh, I really like it. I believe these are just for like paracord or something. So if you want to tie something down, they sell a special adapter if you want to put these like Baja rock lights in here. Uh, but I think I'm going to see if I can put something from Diode Dynamics in this location. Should be fairly doable. and. Uh, it should be a little cheaper that way and, and I love diodes products so I'd love to figure out something to put in there um, but yeah as you can see a bunch of these bars are all adjustable so if you need to uh, put something in there then that's totally fine another thing that I don't see mentioned too often is if you have a rooftop tent uh, these aluminum extrusion racks are super awesome because you can just buy a couple extra crossbars and then you just put in the crossbars uh, connected already to your tent so you don't have to reach under and like tighten everything uh, all you got to do is put these crossbars you know mount them to your tent always and then it it works really well to uh, leave them connected and so you can buy a couple extra crossbars off of their website it saves a ton of uh, work and then it's very easy to just go back to your typical roof rack uh, when you don't want your rooftop tent up there so Really nice option. So, and actually these holes right here, these are for handles that they sell on Uptop Overland's website, uh, as well as a bunch of other just normal accessories. So if you wanna mount various things to the roof rack, it's completely doable. I think actually you can use these box. Oh yeah, I didn't even realize this, but these big handles, they're pretty sturdy. I can shake the whole car using that. So if you're wanting a smaller built-in handle and uh, you know, mounting these boxes up there, that's gonna be totally, an option. <laughs> I don't ever really use those because you can, these are so sturdy, you can just grab onto the side of the rail and uh, jump right up there with the side steps. Um, but if that's something you're trying to do, you can. 
So another thing that's not really talked about is this roof rack is 50 inches wide, which a lot of roof racks on the market for the Forerunner are not that wide. So that's something to also remember is, uh, I think some of the other comparable roof racks like Prinsu, uh, they have narrower roof racks. I'll put the dimensions to those up on the screen. Uh, but I really like this because it has all that extra real estate. And so you can mount tons of things on here. Uh, I think when I was doing my measurements, you can put these cases and then solar panels can fit up here. And then you could also mount lights in the front if you wanted to. And I'm still planning on what I want to do with the rest of the roof rack real estate. Uh, but there's so many different customizable options and you've got so much space up there. It's really, uh, really the world is your oyster. Another thing I'll mention is uh, I think sometimes people like having gas struts on their cases because it helps hold the lid somewhere. Uh, but with this layout, there's plenty of space in between on the roof rack for the lids to just flop open. So until I have something in between the cases, that works out really nicely. So and when I have my tailgate open, that's how much space is in between the case and the tailgate. So I mounted them pretty far back. I think they look really good though. Another pro tip I'll provide is sometimes these cases actually are on sale. Uh, and so watch for the Harbor Freight sales because I think they retail for like 160 or 170. Uh, but you can get them for like 110, 120 pretty frequently when they run like a 30% off sale on them. So watch for those because then if you can get these for that much, it's really a no brainer. They're such a good uh, bang for your buck. If you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. Absolutely love this roof rack and uh, these storage boxes are great. You can hold traction boards, recovery gear, you know, whatever you want to throw in there. And uh, I've absolutely loved having them on the vehicle and they really don't add much height so I hardly lose any miles per gallon and uh, people always ask about wind fairing can't even tell that this thing's up here because other stuff makes noise on the truck like uh, my mud trains that sort of thing uh, but even those are pretty quiet so I really wouldn't worry about wind noise but that's probably something you don't really care about if you're going to be driving a vehicle like this so Thanks so much for watching. Uh, give this video a like if it brought you any value and consider subscribing to the channel if you like content like this. Try to post weekly and uh, hopefully I can bring you all value through my content. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. You're probably wondering how I got up here. This is how I did.